Our next entry is one of the ones based in mythology. The Hydra, or Lernaean Hydra, was a creature from Greek mythology who was slain by the hero Heracles, also known as Hercules. It was one of the many offspring of the two snake-like monsters, Typhon and Echidna, and was itself a serpentine creature. The Hydra's siblings include Kerberos and the Chimera. While those of us who grew up on Disney may picture the Hydra as being sort of dragon-like, many old depictions of the beast show it as a regular snake, albeit a lot bigger, with a whole lot of heads. The Hydra was brought up by the goddess Hera specifically to kill Heracles as revenge against Zeus for one of his many affairs. The Hydra made its home in the Lake of Lerna, from where it occasionally ventured out to harass nearby villages. As is the case with many monsters in history, the description of the Hydra grew more fanciful over time. It is thought to have been first described by the poet Hesiod as having six heads. Later appearances in Greek literature up that to nine heads, and then all the way up to fifty. It wasn't until later accounts that the Hydra gained its most iconic ability, which was to grow two heads, or three depending on the author, for each head that was cut off. At some point, it was decided that the Hydra had only one immortal head, and that it could continue to regenerate its other heads only so long as the immortal one was intact. In addition to its regenerative ability, the Hydra also had poisonous breath and blood. Its breath packed such a punch that just smelling it could kill you. The same could be said for my dog's breath after he discovers a cat turd, but I digress. Heracles' initial encounter with this creature didn't go in his favor due to the head dilemma, and so he called in backup in the form of his nephew Iolus. Iolus came up with the plan that he would use fire to cauterize the stumps of the Hydra's head before they could regrow. With Heracles hacking the heads away and Iolus burning the stumps behind them, they eventually worked their way to the mortal head and chopped that one off as well. Though separated from its body, the head was still alive and so Heracles pinned it down with a rock to put a stop to its shenanigans. He then used his blood to give his arrows a little extra oomph which he used to kill later foes such as the Stymphalian birds. Hera would later turn the Hydra into the constellation known as Hydra. In regard to the art, this piece was definitely one of the more challenging ones so far, and it doesn't even have a background. To be perfectly honest, I have been dragging my feet when it comes to the mythological entries as I don't find researching them as entertaining as the cryptids, so I was drawing a blank as to what to do with the Hydra in the first place. And as cute as I find snakes, I don't actually draw them that often, and so this piece was basically a crash course on snake heads. The main head was based off of the Ottoman Viper, and while I gave it my best shot to keep the other heads similar, some of them ended up looking a little more like boas as I got more tired. Once I found a direction for this piece, I really wanted to play with colors, and so I said yes to basically every color I put my hands on, and essentially threw color planning to the wind. Do I regret it a little? Yes. But I still like how it turned out, and if you don't experiment sometimes, you aren't going to learn anything. But yes, the Hydra, from what I've seen at least, is usually depicted with drab colors, which one might expect given its environment. My version? Not so drab. The purple shading was a bit of an impromptu decision, as I just wanted to see how it would look. A different color probably would have done better, but I do quite like how the purple looks over the blue parts at least. When I was doing the lines for this creature, I was tempted to draw each individual scale, but I opted not to and I'm really glad I didn't. I think going overboard with the lines in such a way would have made an already busy piece even more chaotic, plus it would, it would have taken an eternity. Instead, I tried to use the color patterning to suggest the shape of the scales in a more subtle way. The finished product gives me strong LA Brihe vibes due to the coloration. Thank you. 